don't know, my name is Karen and I have decided to read all 14, 13 books on the International Booker long list before the shortlist is announced on April 7th. Gosh, I am really close, kind of, to making this happen. I am still missing Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. Hopefully I get my hands on that soon. I basically have like those massive behemoth text left to get through. Today, we're here to talk about Phenotypes by Paolo Scott. Okay, this story is 212 pages exploring our main character, Federico. Not Fred, no. Fed or Rico. The author gives us a really, really close character study of our guy, Federico, to explore race in Brazil. There's a lot of things happening in this book, and yeah, I don't even really know where to begin. So, <clears throat> Let me, let me have a sip of water. Let me think a little. One eternity later. This novel starts with our main character being put on some commission to figure out a system for quotas. They want to do some AI situation to identify people. So that's like the intro and you think that this is where it's going to stay, but no, it doesn't. We're going back in time and then jumping forward and going back and then going to the present. It took me about 70 pages before I realized that like those were flashbacks. Like somehow I thought it was all happening on the same timeline and I was really confused. But let's take a step back a little bit more. Federico, when we meet him, is about almost 50 years old and essentially this guy is having a midlife crisis. That's what this is about. His midlife crisis where he has to come to grips with the fact that he is black but white passing. Now, what does that really mean for him? He has a younger brother who is physically black. He experiences the outright racism that Federico will never experience because he looks white. And as a result of that, what we're unpeeling and unpacking is the fact that Federico, who has dedicated his life to um, activism, he is filled with rage, an unexplainable rage as a result of all the things that he sees others, his loved ones experience. Because he's having his midlife crisis, he has to come to grips with the, the love of his life and what that relationship was or wasn't, how he can evolve past that, if he even can, while also reconciling the fact that the town that he grew up in even though he left to do his little work and you know tried to move past that, he can never escape it. It is always there, he's always aware of it. And when he has to go back to that town because his niece was arrested for possession of a gun that like, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, his brother had asked him to hide. Like, there's all these things that are happening. And so he has to go back there to that town and come to grips with like what he did in that situation 20, 30 years ago that has resulted in his niece getting arrested and then like someone in the police academy has a vendetta against him and his brother. Like there's a lot happening in this book and in some regards, it's a little too messy. That's what I think. Because on paper, this is exactly the kind of thing that I should like, an exploration of race criticizing political structures and, you know, being kind of satirical, like, we have that here. It just seems as if there's so many different threads and they weren't woven together in the most comprehensive capacity. And when this novel concludes, we basically have Federico, our main character, kind of um, come to grips with where he is at his life. He's decided to make certain moves and decisions that are going to, like, change the direction his life was heading. However, uh, we're kind of left with some cliffhangers, some threads that weren't fully, you know, woven into that tapestry. 
they're hanging loose and they need to get cut. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna drop that analogy. It, this this definitely was interesting and there's a lot to talk about, but the undercurrent of it is also, it's a story about race and rage and how the two go hand in hand and how Federico, the older brother, the one who feels such a strong desire to protect his younger brother is in many regards unable to do so because his own pride and his worldview is so affected by how others treat him so him being white passing black that there are so many situations and instances that he is unable to fully understand or realize because he's never thought about them properly or like put himself in his brother's shoes entirely even though he tries in his own way so for example they're in their i don't know late 20s and the brother asks the main character to take a photo of him and his friends and the flash was on and Federico turns off the flash and the brother's like no like put the flash on but he still didn't do it and then once the photos were taken the younger brother goes to Federico and is just like look you do this all the time very like lovingly he goes you do this all the time you always turn off the flash but you don't understand if you turn off the flash when you're taking a photo of me you won't be able to see me in the background I blend in and Federico is so shocked that for years he had been committing this act of violence without being aware of it. He's so upset with himself that he goes to, they were at a concert I think, he goes to the bathroom and cries, locks himself in the stall and cries. And he was just like, there's so much I don't know about my brother's experience. But then towards the end of the novel, we have this like one sentence that kind of reveals why it is that Federico has dedicated so much of his life to his activism work. And throughout the novel, we're always coming to grips with the polarities between Federico and his brother. Federico, white passing, but stoic and proud and a protector versus the younger brother who is very easygoing and affable. People love him. He is so like charismatic just naturally. He is such a people person. He is at ease in a way that Federico could never be. And the two brothers are at one point having a discussion where the younger brother who, I don't know, was really big into sports and somehow becomes a PT teacher or something like that. He was doing some training, some sports training. And at the end of it, they were talking about epigenetics, generational trauma and how that can be passed through lineage and whatever. And the younger brother is like, you know, when I found that, when, I, when we were talking about this, when we were learning this in the class, the only thing I could think about was you and how, let's get, let's get the text out, eh? Page 197. So I think if that's true, if you think about it, you must have inherited some kind of pain from our enslaved ancestors. A kind of pain I never inherited, he said. And then he continues, my vision of life is different. My weapons are different. I don't pay the least bit of mind to the racists who cross my path, he said. I never had that ability, I said. You've always needed to get the upper hand. Wherever you were, you always needed to dominate. It's just in your nature, bro. It's like this innate need, he joked. This is a novel about race, rage, self-identification, and what is a life well led? I mean, I know I said that for Elena Knows, but I do think that in many regards, that is why we read to kind of figure out one of the many things, but the larger one is always what constitutes a life well led and how should we live? So though there is a lot more that I could talk about about this book, I'm not going to because I implore you to pick it up, give it a read, or if you already have read it, let me know in the comments what your thoughts were, what your feelings were, what the overall vibe was. Do you think this will get shortlisted? Yes. So with that, I'm going to wrap this up because I got to finish Paradise and hopefully film one more video today. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Swami Karen, and I will see you guys later.